Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Healing Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Berkshire, and I'm your guide into liberating yourself back into your freedom, back into your well-being, back into your peace and happiness after codependency. I'm excited to have you here. <clears throat> Today, we're going to jump into the topic of expectations. And isn't it healthy to have expectations? That was a question that was posed to me in the Essentials Codependency, the Essential Codependency Healing Trainings on Sunday. And I wanted to touch on this here so we could expand on it a bit because, well, I have a very different view on expectations. Before we get into that, I want to invite you to join the community here on Facebook where you can find additional tools, guidance, and support in your journey beyond codependency. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment below, and let me know your guys' thoughts about today's video. If you're listening via podcast, Thank you guys for making my podcast unusually successful. It's just really exciting to see that. Um, come to healyourcodependency.com. You can click there as well. Also, the ascent, the actual heal trainings are open for enrollment. I'll be talking about that more here in a moment. So, what let the expectations? We all have them, right? Expectations are something that are very common. It's very normal to have expectations. It's normal to have these desires that someone else will be, do, or have something. That's usually what an expectation is for us. The way I look at expectations is basically it's a non-voiced desire. It's a desire that has not been consented to. So I have an expectation, say, of person A treating me with respect. This would be a common kind of expectation people would have of other people. I want them to treat me with respect. I want them to listen to me. I want them to, to be kind or nice to me. What this does is we have this internal desire that another person be a way, and then we're now expecting them or imposing a, this desire upon them. And then if and when they violate that, we get upset. We confront them on it. We might feel hurt by it. They might be completely confused as to what's going on because they might not even realize what they've done. This can become especially confusing in relationships where we have other kinds of expectations. Like we have an expectation that they would be attentive and, and know what we want and when we want and how we want it when we haven't actually voiced this to them. Instead, we're we're hoping and we're waiting and we're we're seeking and we're 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 anticipating them showing up and doing this thing for us and well they don't and then we start to feel hurt resentful we start to withdraw we might become passive aggressive yeah let me know in the comments below if that's something you've done or if that's something you've experienced because it's both for me i've Definitely projected my expectations onto other people. And I still do. I have to catch those suckers and bring them into what I call consensual alignment. And that's what the key here is. In my work, expectations are a signal of desire. They're a want. There is something that we desire in this experience with someone else or the person, place, or thing. <clears throat> Our responsibility in my work is to own the expectation and the desire in it. So it's like, okay, I have this expectation that person I will treat me with respect. Now I can take that expectation and convert it to a standard or a request. Now in the case of being treated with respect, that would be a standard. I want to be treated with respect. That's my standard. I will be treated with respect then when someone else comes into my world and they don't treat me with respect, then I communicate that to them. I say, hey, I have a standard of being respected, treated with respect. If you continue to disrespect me, I will do ABC. I'll step away. I'll disengage, etc., etc. This allows your desire, your expectation to be converted into a standard and that standard to become a boundary for you, a director of your behavior for what you need, for what you want, and to help other people understand that you mean business with these things. And we can see what they do, see if they align, see if they value you this way. So that's one way expectations work for us as they reveal standards 
for us. And then we can convert those standards into boundaries and use them to guide us in how we relate with others and whom we allow into our world and who we move away from in our world, who doesn't get to belong in our world that way. So we've got that one. The second component is it is expectations reveal desires. They reveal um, needs and wants, things we want to experience. And so when I have a desire like, hey, I want to be loved on or I want them to buy me a candy or something, <laughs> this, is, this is where things kind of get un- romantic and unexciting or a little boring in the relationship i take that expectation i'm hoping they'll do this for me and i convert it into a request i acknowledge hey i have this desire for them to do this and then i request it i say hey you know i would like this with you what do you think all right would you give me some chocolates that'd be really cool that kind of thing we convert the expectation that is a desire into a request and we see what they do this way our communication is more direct it's more clear it's simpler and we are allowing ourselves to experience a vulnerability in that hey i've got this desire that's that you know close to my heart i like it i value it i want to share it with you and i want to see how they respond to it this is a chance to build some vulnerability and in that experience intimacy not as you know exhilarating as oh they'll they'll figure it out or they might mind read or you know decode this thing instead it's more like hey i'm going to be up direct clear and simple with what i want i'm going to see how they respond i'm going to find out what it's like to receive what i want with this person that's the power of expectations they allow us to define standards in our world which create boundaries for us and protect and enhance our well-being and they help us understand our desires and convert those into requests to create intimacy and connection with those around us. So let me know an expectation you have and then what you discover as you explore it either from the view as, as a standard or as a desire and then go out and experiment with this and then come back and let me know what you discover there. Because that's, that's the magic. Expectations are a gateway into understanding ourselves more and creating more connection with others that way. Now, the actually healed trainings are open for enrollment right now. We have the early bird option, which is the first 25 people can enroll for a certain price point. Uh, the actually healed trainings is my eight week healing mastery course where you're going to learn how to stop fixing and how to start bringing reduction of pain, like we reduce the pain that you're experiencing, and then bring it into resolution and closure so you no longer have to carry that pain in your world. This is done a psychosomatic model where we understand the mental aspect of our pain and our experience and then the somatic aspect and we process the somatic aspect. Uh, I call it impulse processing and that allows us to find more space, more peace, more closure, more uh, integration of our lived experience. So it's eight weeks long and then it comes with ongoing practices that we'll be doing on Sundays where we actually put in to practice the things you've learned in the course so that you can actually experience that integration, that reduction of pain, and that resolution of pain in your world. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And it requires you to have the Heal Your Codependency membership. So this is a new option I've put out there that allows you to join so you can get access to all my live trainings, all my support calls that are twice a week um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as the uh, practice sessions I call facilitations where we practice tools and concepts together. You get access to the codependency healing system that starts in August, as well as what's called specialized focus trainings where we do uh, deep dives into certain aspects of our life, like refining power, converting expectations into desires, improving our communication, building friendships, things like that. This membership I created as a way of creating an affordable way to get access to the trainings, access to live support with me and other students, and connection to community and knowledge and practices that work. So the link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. You're listening via podcast. Come join us. Just go to hearyourcodependency.com. The link is right on the front page. Okay. So come join us. We start July 9th. Enrollment closes July 7th. 50 people maximum for this course. So... Right now, uh, we have three people have already signed up. We have 47 seats open. Come 
join us. Okay. Thank you, my friends, for being here. Thank you for contributing to my success and my well-being as well. I hope that my work is bringing that to you. Let me know how you're doing in the comments, what you've gained from today's episode. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that com- that like button and comment below. And if you're listening via podcast, thank you. And if you want to listen via podcast, we're on Apple, Google, Spotify, and others. So go gently with yourselves, and I will see you guys in our next episode.